Well, we are seeing it. I think the, the stock price versus the, the uh, international trade issues are kind of separated. The company okay. had, had, had some difficult times in the 16 and 17 time frame, and so I think uh, changing out management and doing some things has had most of the effect on the stock. But the, definitely the international trade issues we're seeing you know, effects in the marketplace. Today it's more acceleration of movement of goods to try and beat some of the tariffs and that. Uh, but long term, you know, it'll affect some of our customers uh, if, it, if it continues on. Specifically, if, if we look at China and the Asia region for trade, and you're headquartered in Hong Kong, are you seeing people change the way they do business, new shipping routes, uh, suppliers moving locations, or is, is China still relatively protected in the short term? I think in the short term, um, you know, people are going to play a wait and see attitude. I mean, I think the, you know, the. The issues have to get dealt with. You know, there are real issues amongst various countries, but particularly the U.S. and China. Um, but these kind of things typically take time, and they take a lot of back and forth and arguing and yelling and, and that. Um, so I think people are kind of waiting to see, is there a resolution here that's going to make sense before they start moving too much? But the international trade, I mean, it's really fascinating to see how quickly trade is growing on a container basis between all of the Asian countries, Europe and Asia, U.S., North and South America, Africa. Over the last you know, 20 years, you've seen very significant growth in, in container trade throughout the world. So then do you expect that to continue? Because C-SPAN's in sort of a unique position where you own and then lease out these ships and, and, and these and, containers. And, and then we operate them. So, yep. so yeah, so that's, on one hand, you know, these, these trade tariff issues really don't affect us directly. They affect our customers, Maersk. China Shipping, Yang Ming, and CMA, and those kind of folks. Um, but but the, the growth, basically in the past 20 years, the growth in container uh, shipping has been twice the uh, global GDP. So if, you, if we've had a global GDP of 4%, you've seen about 8% compound growth in the, in the container shipping. You know, I think realistically that will always slow down over time as, you know, given the size of China today versus what it was 30 years ago, et cetera, from a trade perspective. Um, but, but it's still, you know, it's amazing. Last year, $12 trillion of goods were moved in container ships. And in 1970, it was virtually zero. Do you, do you uh, just to come back to the sort of China economy, do you feel like the Chinese economy is hurting? I mean, you clearly made a, a case there for the sort of long-term increase in, in Asian growth to continue. But do, do you feel like their economy is hurting more than people perhaps realize here? Yeah, I don't know that I'd use the term hurting. I think it is, the growth is slowing. Um, you know, they had such a tremendous period of growth, averaging 8 to 10 percent GDP growth a year for 20 years. You know, you're now looking at 6, 6.5 percent, which by any measure, given the size of their economy, is pretty extraordinary. But, but that growth is going to slow. Um, you know, they, they, there was a lot of, if you will, low-hanging fruit that could be cultivated by their labor force, et cetera. A lot of that is now moving to Cambodia, Vietnam, uh, other parts of, of Asia.